right, so ladies and gents, you will see that there's PDF, which are just the notes, and then there's this, which is me talking you through them. Um, so what I will say is there are QR codes throughout that little section that you can use if you feel you need a little bit more information on. So you can see here the variety of places they put the questions. So question fours, question tens, question sevens, question twos, it's bits have come up in. Um, there's a variety. So the first one we're going to start with is chromatography. Now there is a mandatory practical associated with this and in your question it will always give you a choice of whether or not you would use paper chromatography or thin layer chromatography. So that can be called TLC. We will always do the paper chromatography because it's quicker, it's easier, you get a better result, you don't need lots of organic solvent um, to do it. And what you do is you have an a mixture of indicators it may be all four indicators that are listed here it may be two of them and you would run all four of these plus your mixture and you would be able to compare and work out which of these four indicators would be present in your mixture now in terms of the things that you need to know so obviously all these instrumentation methods are they are separating um, the vast majority of them are separation techniques, um, but they're giving you information about your sample. So the first thing that you need to know is that it, when we talk about chromatography and we talk, we always talk about mobile phases and stationary phases. So mobile phase is just means that it is can be a solvent or a gas, depends on what we're, the technique we're looking at. So and your stationary phase is usually a solid, so it can be the paper in this instance or it could be uh, resin beads it just very much depends on what it is it can also be liquid because when we do gc it's a liquid stationary phase so the mixture to be separated will be carried by our mobile phase so by our solvent in this case and it will be carried through the paper which is the stationary phase in this case and the distant travel depends on how much the thing you are separating likes the mobile phase. If it likes the mobile phase a lot, it'll travel a very long way. If it doesn't like your mobile phase, it'll only go a very short distance. So you will remember this from first year when we did separating methods. Um, you would have done, you should have done paper chromatography, and we will do the same once we get back to school. So in terms of the principle, and this is you absolutely positively have to have this separation of components are on the basis of their affinities for the stationary and mobile phases. So affinity is just a really posh way of saying how much they like it. So if you have a high affinity for the stationary phase, you are not moving at all. If you have a high affinity for your mobile phase, you are traveling very far. And in our case, just so to we say it explicitly, the stationary phase is the chromatography paper and the mobile phase is the liquid. So the components will separate on the basis of which one they love more. They will not go very far if they love the stationary phase. They'll go very far if they love the liquid phase. Now this won't work, unfortunately, but you have this little diagram. So how do we apply a sample? So we've taken care of the mobile and stationary phase. Well, your sample is applied as a spot on a line marked in pencil. And the reason you have the line marked in pencil is that if that's going to dissolve in your solvent, it'll interfere with your result. So pencil won't do that. It won't dissolve. You would blow dry your spot and you would reapply it. And what you want is a real small concentrated sp spot of the color. So that is how we would apply our sample. And then in terms of how we would run our sample, well, you put your paper into your solvent tank and you want to make sure that your pencil line is above the layer of the solvent. It can't go below because if it does, you're going to end up having your solution dissolve all the way down here and you won't get any good result. So if you are using organic solvents, you would have to have your lid on and you would allow the vapor to be within your tank and that will increase your separation. So this is specifically for um, organic solvents. We would just be using water so we wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, the solvent will rise up your paper like this and it will pull out the whatever components are in your mixture. So here you can see for this particular one there are four spots. The one next to it has three and the one over at the end 
also has three but they are different so these are each of the little runs um, and the more soluble you are the further you travel up the paper so the paper is working or the solvent front is working against gravity so it, it won't all it won't go to the top of the paper because gravity just won't allow it to do it but it will go a ways up and it will pull the components apart so that's how we perform the experiment now you have on page two and four in my book it could be two and three in yours you have a 2008 question where they ask you to describe so you get to draw your um, mixture i personally would go for a version of this diagram here because you have your line you have your dots above your line you have your solvent and your solvent front so that that's usually the one you would go with in terms of analyzing results well you have a version of the results here and we determine what's called the RF value. Now RF stands for retention factor and retention just means how well, how it gives you an idea of how good it is at sticking to the paper. So if you've got a very low retention factor, you love the stationary phase. If you have a high retention factor, you much prefer the mobile phase. So what you do is you, it is the distance traveled by your component over the distance traveled by the solvent front. So you would get a ruler and you would measure this line first and that will give you a certain number of centimeters and then you would measure the line of your solvent front and that gives you your second you divide one into the other and it gives you your retention factor now these are used in forensic science and a whole variety of things to actually identify components so they are a real thing most chromatography and we'll talk a little bit about um, hblc and gc they will be just run automatically and they would give something like this up here for your peaks where your machine has measured the intensity of the the line and the distance so again as you say you would do this as an experiment and we'll worry about that when we get back to school so gas chromatography can be called gc it looks very like this it's very very easy method you will inject your sample this is your carrier gas your mobile phase and you inject your sample here, your carrier gas picks it up and it takes it through the column. And as it takes it through the column, it's going to separate the components. And once it has done that, it puts it through a detector, which brings you to a readout. So in this case, our mobile phase is a gas, but our stationary phase is actually a non-volatile liquid. So it sounds a bit weird, but it, it, it is, does what it says in the tin. And this is on an inert solid. So as your sample, your gas sample passes through, if it's attracted to the stationary phase, it'll take a longer for it to actually get to the detector. So there are four main processes. You have your injection, you have your transport, you have your separation and you have your detection. Now, the reality is that the SEC are going to be interested in your mobile and your stationary phase and they're going to be interested in your principal. So the last time for chromatography, we had separation based on the affinities for the stationary and mobile phase. It's the exact same principle here. OK, so again, we have a retention time. So it's the time between the start of separation, which is down here, versus the appearance of your peak at your detector. So this one, you don't have to do the maths. The maths is all done for you. So if you look for at linoleic acid, the, the peak height here is coming off roughly at five minutes. So the retention factor for linoleic acid is five minutes. Um, GC is most commonly used for with mass spec and the GC will separate out the different components in your sample and then the mass spec will identify them for you. So this is Marion Jones, I think it's Sydney Olympics, pretty sure. Um, and she got caught out using GC mass spec. So drug testing of athletes, blood alcohol tests, they would all use this as a technique. So our next technique is a thing called high performance liquid chromatography. It can be called HPLC for short. Um, so this is used for a variety of, of labs. So I've done loads of HPLC in my past life. So in this now, our mobile phase this time is going to be liquid and our stationary phase is going to be a solid. So what they do is in this column, they will pack it with a whole load of little beads. It's like the resin beads in your deionizer and they'll have certain characteristics to them and you will apply your sample in at the top and it'll the length of time it takes the sample to get between the beads in terms of its affinity for your stationary phase 
and when it comes out the bottom it's going to be detected. So this is used with non-volatile liquids, so things that would be soluble in water. And again, we're now not looking for affinity between mobile and stationary phase, we're talking more about different tendencies to adsorb, not absorb, adsorb. So we've done our rates, and when we did rates, we were saying for the catalysis, um, hydrogenous catalysis, that your sample will come on, it adsorbs onto the surface, and then when you turn it into product, it will desorb. So, so a similar language is used here to talk about chromatography. So separation is due to the components having different tendencies to absorb to your stationary phase. So again, we have similar processes. You have injection of your sample. You have transport. This time now your sample is being pumped through your column. We have separation in your column and we have detection. And the position of each peak, the retention time again will be determined exactly like in GC. So you get a little um, profile that has peaks on it and you can use it to determine um, retention and then therefore identify it so we have already said this it's used to separate non-volatile mixtures and your uses include growth promoters in meat vitamins in food will can be uh, discovered using hplc so we've already done mass spec when we did atomic structure in form four and remember we had the via sd for our processes so we have vaporization we have ionization we have acceleration separation and detection and you need to know each of those and you need to have a sentence for each and our separation is also our principle so the positively charged ions are separated on the basis of their mass when moving in a magnetic field and the lighter you are the more deflection and more separation so you hit the wall more um, and then we had the uses so relative atomic mass of an element relative molecular mass of a substance and identification of organic substances now remember there is maths um, with this so you need to remember how to calculate from different isotopes what is the relative atomic mass so remind yourself on that. So we only have, I think, two left over. So we have ultraviolet absorption spectrometry. And again, this method, we are, it's a quantitative method. So you would have a standard curve for this. You have your UV source. It goes through your sample and a certain amount will be absorbed and your detector determines the difference. So your UV light is passed. You get your absorption spectrum like the one given in here. Um, and you can use it to determine concentration. Now the principle is what you need to know. So it's the exact same as the comparator or the colorimeter where absorbance of light is proportional to the concentration. And this has loads of uses. So drug metabolites, plant pigment concentrations um, can be used to determine protein concentrations in baby foods and other weird and wonderful things. Okay, so again here it will be the principle or is going to be what they're looking for. In terms of infrared, this is qualitative. So it's not actually giving you numbers, it's just telling you what is here. And it's specifically used in organic compounds. So the spectrum that's produced is unique and we're not looking at absorbance this time, we're looking at transmittance. So this is why the peaks look like they're upside down. So it's very similar to the UV. You have your sample and your blank. You put your infrared uh, light source through your sample and a detector detects it. Now the principle of this one is a bit weird. So what it does is if you put infrared through an organic sample, it actually makes the different bonds wiggle in a whole variety of ways. And that's what's giving you your peak. So our principle is the different molecules will absorb your infrared radiation at different frequencies depending on your bonding within your molecule. So if you have alcohol OH bonds, they'll represent differently to um, alkenes, alkynes. They will all look different. So you, here you can have a look at the spectrum here. You will have some things that will be similar. So they have similar bonds. So these are kind of similar peaks. Um, but then you will have differences because this OH bond will behave differently 
to this carbon um, so that's why you get the differences in the in the in the profile so just we've already said it your infrared radiation is passed through your sample and you get your spectrum and again this has a whole variety of uses but it's specifically with organic compounds so that brings us to the end of the blurb and as i say if you need to use the qr codes that are in the book to get more information please do the best way to go about this is to actually look at the questions that the sec ask and then you'll figure out from there what it is they want